sino ba dito yung favorite si Auditing Theory? Baka naman ako lang. <laughs> Admittedly, uh, Auditing Theory, like any other theory subjects, is not everyone's cup of tea. Kasi nga, pag pinag-iisip natin yung theory subjects, we well, think about the standards and how they are so boring and you know, how they could somehow make us go to sleep. So, siguro at the onset, allow me to make a very simple request before we start our auditing theory session. And that request is for you to be excited about kahit si auditing theory na lang mo. Because do you know that auditing theory is actually a very wonderful story of your future as certified public accountants? So for the next few sessions, let us together tell the tale of what your life will be like as professional accountants, particularly if you endeavor to go into public practice. Okay, let's start with the introduction to assurance engagements. Whenever we introduce the assurance engagements, kailangan natin mag-refer dun sa tinatawag natin. Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. Now, ano bang ibig sabihin ng framework? So, pag sinabi natin framework, it's a supporting structure. Okay? So, siguro, you would remember another framework that you have encountered, yung conceptual framework for financial accounting and reporting. So, ito naman is the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. So, kumbaga, ito yung foundation. Ito yung supporting structure. So, whatever standards will be made and adopted for assurance engagements. So let us start this discussion by taking a look at question number one of our handout. Okay? Question number one would actually let us or is actually asking us to determine if the statements are correct or incorrect. So starting with statement one, Philippine Standards on Assurance Engagements describes and defines the elements and objectives of an assurance engagement. Statement two says the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements Provide, contain basic principles, essential procedures, and related guidance consistent with the concepts in the framework for the performance of assurance engagements. Now, as we try to define kung correct or incorrect ba yung mga statements, if, may, if, if you are privileged enough to have the um, materials printed out, no, that, that would be great kasi po pwede kang mag-notes, ano, mag-underscore. It would be helpful for us to underscore that the first statement refers to the Philippine Standards on Assurance Engagement. And the second statement refers to the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. So sabi nga natin kanina, when we talk about the framework, it's the supporting structure. So if we take a look at statement 2, sinabi nito, it already contains the basic principles, the essential procedures, and the related guidance. In other words, this statement 2 already talks about the details. But if you talk about statement 1, sabi ng statement 1, it defines and describes the elements and objectives of an assurance engagement. Now, you ask yourself the question, saan kaya dito mas describe si supporting structure? Okay? Di po ba si supporting structure yung nag-define and describe the elements and objectives? Kasi dito talaga yung parang foundation or yung basis niya. Kaya statement number one po is actually an incorrect statement. Kasi yung correct dapat, that should have been the Philippine framework for assurance engagements. If we take a look at statement number two, statement number two din po is incorrect. So pareho po silang dalawa na incorrect. Kasi yung statement number two should refer to the Philippine standards. So parang nag-interchange lang sila. Okay? Now, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at this particular slide. Sabi dito, what are the services of a practitioner? So I would like to point out that it says services of a practitioner. Okay? Tanong ko nga. Are all practitioners auditors? Okay? Are all practitioners auditors? True or false? Okay, false po yan. Kasi si practitioner is generic, broader yung definition ng practitioner. Okay? So, kung pwede na si practitioner ay auditor, pero hindi ibig sabihin lahat ng practitioners ay auditor. Kasi may iba-iba pa tayong practitioners, kagaya for example ng mga accreditors. Okay? So, another statement. Are all auditors practitioners? Okay, kasi yung first statement ko, are all practitioners auditors? Diba sabi natin false? Kasi 
technically, pag sinasabi natin auditor, we normally refer to the audit of financial statements. So, the next statement naman, are all auditors practitioners? Okay? Ang sagot po dun ay, true. Kasi nga, mas generic si practitioner. So, si auditor is just one of the many practitioners there are. Alright? So, as a practitioner, po pwedeng mag-perform ang tinatawag natin assurance engagements and non-assurance engagements. Although we will go into more detail about these two in a few, siguro one of the basic difference na lang um, that we would be looking at is if it's an assurance engagement, then quite obviously it gives assurance. Okay? Or nagbibigay ka ng opinion, or nagbibigay ka ng, ng conclusion, nagbibigay ka ng assurance. Absent that, then it is called a non-assurance engagement. Okay, apply natin ha. Which of the following is not an assurance service? Audit of financial statements, review of interim financial information, web trust engagement, or preparation of financial statements. Okay, so one of the things, again, um, if, if you have um, a printout, no? so talaga, if, if it's a theory subject, it would really help a lot no? if you write or make doodles or whatever, um, mag-underscore ka. Okay? Yung question kasi is not an assurance service. So, hahanapin natin which of these choices ay hindi assurance service. Okay? And of course, not an assurance service is the preparation of financial statements. Kasi nga, parang compilation lang siya. Nag-prepare ka lang ng financial statements. Hindi ka naman nagbibigay ng opinion. Okay? Or conclusion. Okay? Another question. Which of the following professional services would be considered an assurance engagement? So, kanina hinanap natin sino yung not an assurance engagement. This time naman, yung hahanapin natin is which are considered or which would be considered as assurance engagement. Okay? So, sabi sa letter A, an engagement to install web-based accounting system for a client. Okay? Ano ulit yung engagement? It's simply to install. Nagbibigay ka ba ng conclusion or opinion about it? Hindi. So, it's not an assurance engagement. Preparation of tax returns and attachments based on information provided by the client. Okay? What are you doing as a practitioner? You simply assembled, prepared the tax returns. Are you giving any assurance? Again, the answer is no. Okay? So, hindi po yan assurance engagement. That we see, performance of agreed upon procedures related to the application of the client with the SEC to increase its authorized shares. Sabi dito, agreed upon procedures. So, we already know na pag agreed upon procedures, it is not an assurance engagement. So, that means we are left with letter D. Kasi letter D sabi niya, an engagement to report on the compliance of a client with a debt covenant. Ibig sabihin, you are, some, you are giving an assurance or an opinion as to whether the client is compliant of a debt covenant or not. So therefore, nagiging example siya ng assurance engagement. Okay? Very good. Now, pag-usapan natin yung fundamentals of assurance engagements. And to do that, we have to understand bakit nga ba may demand for assurance services? Bakit nga ba kailangan na kumuha ng assurance engagement ng mga possible future clients natin. Diba? So, kailangan may demand for assurance engagements kasi expected na may bias yung responsible party. No? And I think this is very, very <clears throat> self-explanatory. Siyempre, kung ikaw, kunwari, yung may-ari ng negosyo or ng business, may bias ka towards it. Diba? So, that is the reason why we would need an external a party who will report on the reliability of our assertions. Another thing is remote kasi yung users. Malayo yung users from the people manning it, manning or managing the business. Meron tayong tinatawag kasi na the agency theory. So sabi ng agency theory that man is an economic man. So ibig sabihin, yung members of management, they would always, by, by nature, kasi nga they are economic men, no, they would always prefer make decisions based on ano yung makabubuti sa kanila. Not necessarily ano yung mas nak nakakabuti doon sa uh, shareholders versus stakeholders. So especially since malayo yung users, is for example, the shareholders, for example, the creditors, they are not in the business 24-7. So they do not necessarily know the decisions that are being made, right? So because of the remoteness of users, 
kailangan natin i-bridge yun. And how do we bridge that? Through assurance services. Yung complexity ng subject matter. Siguro para sa atin, parang, okay lang naman eh, financial statements, I know how to read that, no? I'm, an I'm, I'm an expert at that. Siguro pa kayo yun yung iniisip natin. But you have to understand as well that there are a lot of users of financial information which may not be as well-versed no, sa ating accounting standards as us. So, complex kasi yung subject, complex yung subject matter. Okay? So, when the complexity of the subject matter comes in, we would need an expert. Okay? So, kaya siguro, uh, kaya meron tayong uh, demand for assurance services. And then, we also need to talk about how assurance services actually help manage the risk. Okay? Particularly, information risk. Ano yung information risk? So, when we talk about information risk, Quite simply, ito yung risk that the assertions or the information that came to your knowledge may contain misstatements. Okay? Ito yung information risk. Kunwari, pinagtatawan na namin sa class ito eh. Kasi when we give an example of information risk, almost always when I ask the students to present an example, yung, yung palagi nilang sinasabi sa akin is, Miss, yung profile pic natin sa, sa Facebook. <laughs> Okay, that presents an information risk. Kasi nga, minsan parang, wow, ang gaganda at ang gagwapo natin. Pero minsan sa personal, parang mas maganda at mas gwapo pala. Di ba? So, information risk. There is always the possibility that the information that has reached us may have contained misstatements. Ilang beses na ba tayo na biktima ng fake news o ng news na hindi complete? Okay, so in layman's term, that is information Okay? And then the cost of capital reduction. Ano ba yung cost of capital? What is the cost of borrowed capital? Okay, of course, the cost of borrowed capital is interest. Ano ba yung cost of invested capital? Okay, but if, if the capital or if the resources are sourced from um, shareholders or owners, of course, yung dividends or yung profit sharing. Yeah? So when assurance services come in because they, some, they, they lower the risk, Okay, so the cost of capital is also reduced. Now, which of the following statements does not describe a condition that creates a demand for auditing? Okay, kasi auditing is an assurance engagement. Letter A, conflict between the information preparer and the user can result in biased information. Okay, letter B, information can have substantial <coughs> sorry, economic consequences for a decision maker. Letter C, expertise is often required for information preparation and verification. And letter D, users can directly assess the quality of information. So take note, yung hinahanap natin does not describe a condition that creates a demand for quality. And I think you are able to spot the obvious answer. The obvious answer is delta. Kasi, if the users themselves can directly assess or measure the quality of information, but ka pa magpapa-audit, di ba? So, the reason that we need the financial statements to be audited, kasi nga, remote yung users. Malayo sila from the financial information. Okay, so far, I hope we're all, all doing okay. Sige, hindi natin si question number five. CPAs in public practice who perform assurance engagements are governed by the following set. So, yung hinahanap natin ay exception. Naka-underscore naman siya already. Okay? So, exempt. The Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. The Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants in the Philippines. The Philippine Standards on Related Services. And the Philippine Standards on Quality Control. Okay? So, yung exception yung hinahanap. I think we can already safely set aside Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. Bakit? Kasi assurance engagement yung pinuperform ni, ni CPA. Eh. So, it's very obvious. He will have to abide by the Philippine Framework for Assurance Engagements. And I think we could already set aside as well letter B. Safe na yan. Kasi CPA is in public practice. So, ibig sabihin professional accountant. So, quite obviously, covered din po siya na Code of Ethics. So we are then left with two choices, Philippine Standards on Related Services and the Philippine Standards on Quality Control, so that we will know kung saan dyan si exempt and would therefore become our answer. 
Let us try to remember, ano ba, yung, ano ba yung Philippine Standards on Related Services? Ano ba yung Related Services? Okay, so, si Related Services, actually, eto yung mga non-assurance engagements. Okay? And if you are able to catch that concept na si Related service, Services pala is the non-assurance engagements, then you would obviously know that the answer is letter C. Kasi yung Philippine Standards on Quality Control that will govern yung firms that perform historical audits and other assurance engagements. Si letter C kasi talks about the non-assurance engagements. Kaya siya po yung exemption. Alright? Ngayon, tignan naman natin yung definition of assurance engagement. Okay? An assurance engagement is an engagement in which a practitioner, tignan niyo po ah, practitioner, expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users other than the responsible party about the outcome or the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against a criteria. Now, quite admittedly, if you remove the bullet points and you read the definition of assurance engagements in its entirety, nakaka-overwhelm po. Kasi ang daming English. <laughs> ang daming English. So this is also how I often study. Pag medyo napaka-wordy, I try to break it down into smaller parts. Okay? Para, para mas digestible siya. So, ano bang sabi dito? An assurance engagement is an engagement in which a practitioner expresses a conclusion. Napaka-important. Okay? So, sa assurance engagement pala, dapat si practitioner nag-e-express ng conclusion. Walang conclusion, hindi po yan assurance engagement. It is designed to enhance the degree of confidence Take note po, sabi lang niya, designed to enhance or improve the degree of confidence. It does not say that it guarantees the correctness, no. It does not say that it ensures the correctness, hindi po. Sabi lang niya, to enhance lang po the degree of confidence okay, of the intended users other than the responsible party. Bakit? Bakit sinabi niya sa, sa definition? Kasi si responsible party, pwede po siyang ma-intended user. Di ba? Si management also makes use of the assurance report or, or the financial information. Kaya lang, it's very important to uphold the element of assurance engagement. The responsible party should not be the only intended user. Okay? About the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against a criteria. Okay? So, meron po tayong subject matter. Meron tayong set of criteria and we are going to measure the subject matter against the criteria. A very beautiful um, way of illustrating this would of course be meron tayong responsible party and of course a responsible party is responsible for either the subject matter and the subject matter information or one of the two. Now, yung subject matter natin will of course be used by our intended users, okay? Um, who, who might include the responsible party, but then should, the responsible party should not be the only one. Okay? Yung atin pong subject matter comes with a set of criteria. Now, here comes the practitioner who evaluates or measures the subject matter against the criteria and then issues an assurance report. The assurance report <clears throat> will enhance the quality of the subject matter or the subject matter information. And this will, this will enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users. Let us proceed to question number six. Assurance services are best described as, <clears throat> tignan natin sa letter A, independent professional services that improve the quality of information or its context for decision makers. Sounds beautiful to the ears, right? So let's park that on the side. Letter B, the assembly of financial statements based on the assumptions of a reasonable party. So sa letter B, anong sabi niya? You are simply assembling the financial statements. You are simply forming the financial statements. Are you providing some sort of assurance? Wala. So we could mark letter B as X. Okay, letter C, services designed to express an opinion on historical financial statements based on the results of an audit. So, parang it also sounds beautiful to the ears, di ba? So, isat aside natin. Okay, part it to the side. Services designed for the improvement of operations resulting in better outcomes. Let's ask ourselves the question, ano ulit si assurance engagement? Di ba? Ano bang ini-improve ni assurance engagement? 
Is it the operations? Di naman, di ba? It improves the, uh, the degree of reliability. Okay? Pero hindi niya ini-improve yung operations. So, ibig sabihin, X na naman si letter D. So, now we are left with two choices. A or C. Tapos, eto yung pinakaayaw natin sa auditing theory. Kasi, um, more often than not, hinahanap natin si best answer. So, letter A says, independent professional services that improve the quality of information or its context for decision makers. Letter C says, services designed to express an opinion on historical financial status based on the results of an audit. Okay? Now, for us to be able to determine saan ba dyan yung ating best answer, I would like to point out something very important in the question. And the question actually refers to assurance services. And when we say assurance services, it is the generic context. And so therefore, the correct answer is letter A. Because although letter C is an application of an assurance service, pero very specific siya to an audit. Meron kasi tayong assurance services that are not necessarily audits of historical financial statements. Alright? So yeah, I, hope, I hope that as you go along the questions in the handouts that were previously given to you, know that you are um, assessing your performance as well. Let's try number seven. Which of the following best describes the objective of an assurance engagement? <clears throat> Letter A, to assist the company in improving the effectiveness and efficiency of its operations. Again, balikan natin yung definition ni assurance engagement. And then, and then you tell me if letter A sounds correct or not. Okay? Letter B, to benchmark the company's information with companies that are considered leaders in the industry. So, ibig sabihin ng letter B, we're going to compare the, this company's information with the leaders in the industry. Yan ba yung objective ni assurance engagement? Letter C, to assist the company in compiling information. So, sabi ng letter C, to compile, to assemble the information needed for the preparation of its financial statements. Do you think? Or letter D, to enhance the credibility of information being provided by one party to another in such a way that the other party receiving the information will be able to use it in making informed decisions. And I think at this point, we already know the correct answer, yeah? The correct answer is letter D, of course. Okay, congratulations if you got the correct answer. Okay, if you did not get the correct answer just yet, don't worry, you still have question number eight. The, this talks about the scope of the framework. The following engagements may meet the definition of assurance engagements, but are not covered by the framework. Okay, interesting. So, the following engagements may meet the definition of assurance engagements, but are not covered by the framework. So, statement one, engagements to testify in legal proceedings regarding accounting, auditing, taxation, and other matters. Statement two, engagements that include professional opinions, views, or wording from which a user may derive some assurance but those opinions, views, or wordings are incidental only to, to the overall engagement. A written report is expressly restricted in use by specified users. There is a written understanding with the users that the engagement is not intended to be an assurance engagement, and the engagement is not represented as an assurance engagement in the report. Have a look. Statement three, an assurance engagement which is part of a larger consulting engagement. Engagement. <laughs> Okay, so ano yung hinahanap natin? Assurance engagements, they meet the definition of an assurance engagement, but they are not covered by the framework. And the correct answer is 1 and 2 only. Okay, yung statements 1 and 2 lang po. Kasi even if statement 3 refers to an, to an assurance engagement, engagement that is part of a larger consulting engagement, the fact remains na assurance engagement pa rin po siya. I think it is pretty obvious well, state, why, wait, sorry, why statement 2 um, is not covered in the framework because it already says uh, the written report is express, expressly restricted in use. There is a written understanding that the engagement is not intended to be an assurance engagement. So at its onset, parang assurance engagement siya, but it is not intended to be an assurance engagement. So hindi po siya kasali dun sa framework. And of course, yung statement one po, kasi it refers to legal proceedings na. So, hindi po siya 
uh, within the scope of the assurance framework. Okay? Now, let's talk about question number nine on the reports on non-assurance engagements. A practitioner performed a non-assurance engagement with a client. Which of the following statements are allowed to be included in the report of the practitioner? So, ano yung type of engagement that was performed? It's a non-assurance engagement. Okay? Hmm. Si practitioner po ay nag-perform ng non-assurance engagement. Which of the following statements daw po are allowed to be included in the report of the practitioner? Statement A. A statement saying that the practitioner complied with the framework for assurance engagements. Letter B. Use of words such as assurance, audit, or review. Letter C. A conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the intended users about the outcome of the evaluation or measurement of the subject matter against criteria. Or letter D, none of the above. Take note, non-assurance po yung engagement. Saan daw po dito ang allowed? Obviously, none of the above. You cannot use any of those wordings kasi that all refers to assurance engagements. So baka malito yung client. It might be a misrepresentation. Okay? It might be misleading. So, none of the above. Number 10, let's talk about engagement acceptance. Okay? Now, a proposed assurance engagement can only be accepted when kailan po natin pwedeng tanggapin ang isang assurance engagement. Statement 1, the CPA's preliminary knowledge about the engagement circumstances indicates that relevant ethical requirements will be satisfied. Statement 2, the subject matter of the engagement is appropriate. The criteria to be used are suitable and available to intended users. The practitioner has access to sufficient appropriate evidence to support the conclusion and the conclusion is to be contained in a written report. And statement 3, there is a rational purpose for the engagement. So, kailan ba pwedeng tanggapin ang assurance engagement? Ang sagot po, 1, 2, and 3. When those conditions are met, then go ahead, tanggapin nyo na po yung engagement. Okay? Now, next up, we will be talking about the elements of an assurance engagement. But before we do so, I'm going to momentarily end this video po muna kasi as I promised, shorter videos of no more than 30 minutes each para hindi po kayo masyadong bored. I hope um, you are excited to jump into the next video. Again, for the next video, we're going to start talking about the elements of insurance.